Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians across the state and across the country. Um, we do these shows live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but they are recorded. So if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's not a problem. You can always go back to our website and watch any of our recordings that are posted up there every week. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, um, presentations, interviews, book reviews, demos, mini training sessions. Basically, if it's related to libraries, we'll put it on the show. <laughs> um, and we do, we have guest speakers that come in and we have commission staff that do sessions. And this morning we have a mixture of that. Um, we have Catherine Brockmeyer sitting next to me right now, who's actually a staff person here at the commission, um, in charge of our grant program for um, scholarship students, um, and she'll talk more about that. And on the line with us, and we'll bring them in a, in a little bit, we've got a couple of the students who are part of our 21st Century Librarian Program Scholarship um, Program, and um, have them talk about some of their experiences they had in certain parts of it. So um, I will just hand over to you, Catherine, to take it away and okay. talk about what you guys are doing this morning. All right. Um, thanks for being here today, and thank you to our two presenters today, who I will introduce in just a moment. I am Catherine Brockmeyer. I'm the Grant Program Manager for the IMLS 21st Century Librarian Program, and it's a grant that we received in 2010 from the Institute of Museum and Library Services to distribute funds for scholarships and also for grants to public libraries for internships. And we'll focus on the scholarship program today. Um, the scholarship program is twofold. The students receive um, funding as a, in form of scholarship for tuition, books, and fees at, while they're pursuing a credential in library science. And um, they also receive stipends of up to $2,000 for the purchase of a laptop, since so many classes are now offered online, mm -hmm. and also laptops tend to have um, can be portable, take them to class, and also they can handle graphic-heavy online um, modules, such, you know, such as watching videos online or having to participate in an online forum or Moodle or um, something to that effect, Blackboard. Um, also, um, it also allows for uh, membership in one, um, one association, one professional association, and the other one that we're going to touch on today is for attendance at a regional or national conference. And um, so we have two students here with us today. Part of the stipend program is that the student applies for the stipend. It's, they estimate how much it will cost. They provide a justification for it. And then they, um, let me just show you the application here real quickly. Sorry about the scrolling if that makes anybody dizzy. Apply for a stipend, conference attendance. And so they provide their contact information. They talk about the conference they're going to attend. They provide a justification for attending. And then we give them a worksheet so that to help them estimate how to estimate their lodging meals, airfare, mileage the registration fees, and miscellaneous. And so hopefully that gives them an opportunity to start thinking about exactly what they're going to be doing at conference and how much it's going to cost them. So there is some um, footwork that needs to be done prior to submitting the stipend application. It's then reviewed by committee. And should they be awarded, they, are, they, are, they receive a letter of award, um, at which point in time they can start expending funds for registration, making um, hotel um, reservations, buying their airplane ticket as needed, and as soon as they've um, completed a purchase, they're able to submit that for reimbursement. So um, let's say that they register and they buy their airplane ticket, um, they can submit that immediately for reimbursement, and then after the conference they can submit um, their, their lodging and their meals and any other incidental expenses that they had while they were at conference, including if they live farther away from an airport that they have mileage and also parking and so on and so forth. So that is the stipend process of application and then um, reimbursement. 
And uh, we hope that we have made that fairly clear and that the process has been fairly smooth. And hopefully we'll hear from the students how that went for them um, today. And if there were hiccups along the way, we want to hear about that from our students too. Um, <clears throat> so that is the, the process. We offer uh, scholarships to attend many different regional and library, um, many regional and library, I'm sorry, regional and national library conferences. And we do, um, we do offer a list of various um, uh, conferences that they might attend. If, for example, someone is going to midwinter right now. Um, we have the Library Technology Conference um, coming up in St. Paul, Minnesota. We might have a couple of nibbles on that. Computers in Libraries, and then um, the ACRL. So the biggie um, that's going to be coming up is the American Library Association Conference in Chicago, late June, late June and early July. And then another biggie for us is going to be the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, which is in a, going to be in our backyard right here in Omaha. Today we have two scholarship students who attended what became a regional conference with the Mountain Plains Library Association in conjunction with the Nebraska Library Association and the Nebraska School Librarians Association, formerly known as Nebraska Educational Media Association. NEMA, yes. NEMA. <laughs> and so that became a regional conference and so that became eligible for a stipend uh, conference attendance. And so let's uh, transition on over to um, our first student. Her name is Libby Munsell, and she's here with us today. I'm going to have her talk a little bit about um, what educational track she's on, um, introduce herself a little bit, where she's going to school. She might talk a little bit about the application process for the stipend, and then um, if she can talk about her conference experience, who she met, what she learned, what surprised her, and um, what I will show what she posted in our forum, which is the Nebraska Librarians Learning Together web page for all of our scholarship students and other Nebraska librarians. They post in the forum, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that up um, so that she can refer to that if she needs to. Hi, Libby. You're on air. Hi. Can you hear me all right? Perfect. All right. My name is Libby Munso, and um, I live in York, Nebraska, and I work at the Public Library, Kilgore Memorial Library. And I, at first I went to Central Community College and got my associates. And as I was finishing that up, I heard about the scholarship from a number of sources, from a couple of my library teachers and from um, the director at the library where I'm working now. And so I applied for the scholarship and I continued my education at UNO, and so now I'm a junior at UNO, and let's see, um, there's been several different things that I've been able to do because of the scholarship, like Catherine was talking about, it helps with tuition and everything, um, we, books are helped, uh, books are paid for, and um, the biggest thing so far has been the conference, I think, um, besides tuition. And it's really nice to be able to go to a conference. Uh, the NLA conference was the first conference I've ever been to. Um, so I was kind of nervous at first to go because I didn't know what it would be like. But um, they really help guide you through what it's going to be like. And they send um, people to walk around with you if you need help. And um, Catherine did a great job of, of texting us about all the times that everyone was going to meet up, and so that was kind of cool. Um, let's see, you wanted me to talk about the application process, right? So I first applied for the stipend for the conference. Um, I knew I was going because I wanted, I wanted to go, and everyone at, at the library where I work was planning on going, so we all kind of uh, registered together and everything. So um, I did my application for the conference and um, sent in my registration and everything. And once I was approved for um, the stipend, then I was able to um, send in reimbursement requests. And so as I filled out the application, I, I uh, estimated all my expenses at first of what 
things are going to cost, and that was pretty easy to do. It, it explains at the end there that Catherine's showing you. It explains how you can estimate your expenses, and on the website for the conference, they um, had had the expenses lined out as you registered, so you knew how much the conference itself was going to cost and how much each meal. Um, I went to a couple luncheons and the banquet, and so um, all those costs were outlined in the registration and on the website. Um, so that way I knew what it was going to cost, and I could calculate my mileage um, and write that all down on the application. And so that way I knew later on, as I, when I was going to send in my request for reimbursement, I knew what it was going to cost, and it was, it was all planned out. So um, after I got my approval, then I worked on sending in my first request for reimbursement for the registration itself and the luncheons, because I paid for those ahead of time. Um, and then I waited till after the conference to send in another request for reimbursement for the mileage and other miscellaneous expenses that I had during the conference that I accounted for at the beginning. So um, we were supposed to keep all our receipts and everything and keep, keep organized so that we knew everything and had proof of, of all our expenses and then send it all in one envelope to the to the commission and they worked on sending us back the money for it so it all worked wonderfully I, I did want to um, interject there that um, the um, <clears throat> typically the per diem is a guideline that's a national guideline and so uh, they give you, based on the location and the time of year that you're going to be in any particular location, what the guideline is for the maximum allowable amount, it, which is a, still a guideline for, for meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But um, we made an exception um, for the luncheons and the banquets so that the students could participate fully in the conference. And so even if they... Um, if the amount that the GSA said was going to be $45 and there was a $50 um, banquet cost, we allowed for that and allowed the students to, because we wanted them to experience, have the full experience of the conference. So. Yeah. Right. What did you wanna, want me to continue talking about? Well, if you would like to talk a little bit about what you attended, um, you can start. Here's your, um, here is one of your um, reports. What we ask of our scholarship students <coughs> that do attend on a stipend is that they, in one post, su submit something they learned that surprised them, something they learned that they can apply to work or coursework, and someone they met and what they learned from them and their work or education. In other words, networking. So um, I think, Libby, this first post that you did, um, you just po you posted of all the different sessions that you, you attended. And if you want to refer to it, that's fine. I'm just going to leave it up for everybody to read. OK. Um, I, I talked about a couple of sessions there, and I have some more in my notes here, so I might expound upon that. But um, I mean, I, I went to Back to the Future, um, which uh, talked about different ways to increase circulation, as I mentioned in my forum post. Um, let's see. It, on my notes here I have, we talked about the basics of who we are, what we do as libraries, and who we serve, um, different ways that we can organize the library to meet patrons' needs better, and um, how the libraries there were looking at statistics to figure out what people check out most and, um, and what they can continue doing so that patrons continue to come to the library. Um, I really enjoyed Innovation on the Shoestring, and I mentioned Zoho Chat in my forum post, um, which I thought was kind of cool, and our library is working on changing its website, and so I thought that would be a good thing, a good pointer to, to tell my director and let him know that that's something that maybe our library can do to assist patrons who don't necessarily want to come into the library to ask a question. They can just um, type their question um, 
at their computer at home or wherever they are, and um, it'll come to us at the library, and we can answer that. So that's kind of cool. Um, I, Catherine um, had me meet up with this man named Andrew Sherman um, because at once one time I was thinking of um, my secondary field at school being computer science or something along those lines, and he kind of talked with me about WordPress um, because I've been interested in websites, and I don't know that much yet, but I'm I'm definitely learning and. And so that's something that I might be doing on the side and thinking about um, just having that knowledge and, and learning that on my own is kind of a good challenge for me, I think. Um, I don't think I talked about it in my forum post, but I really enjoyed the um, customer service session that I went to. Um, it was kind of fun to talk to all the other librarians about um, problems that we've had in the library and how we've dealt with them and how they would deal with them. And um, we talked about how everyone has a right to stay safe in the library. And um, we don't have problem patrons. We have patrons that need help. So everyone has some kind of, um, some kind of question that they need help answering. And so that's what we are there for as librarians to help them with their questions and their problems. Um, that we can help solve. So that was kind of cool. Um, I went to a library signage session um, and we are working on renovating our library sometime in the future and there's there's plans uh, that have been going on but it hasn't been completely in place yet but we're working on it and so I think library signage was a good thing to talk about um, as we try to change our library and make it more um, accessible for the patrons and easier to navigate for them so that they don't always have to ask us where the restroom is. Of course, if they do, we'll answer, but um, things that they can figure out on their own and want to come back without having to um, to always be with us. They can do it on their own, too. Um, so yeah, it was really nice to go to all those sessions. It was pretty easy to find. When I got to the conference, they handed out a packet with all, uh, all the information that we needed for the conference and we had all our tickets in one bag and it was really nice and organized. Um, we had a map to go to all our different rooms for our sessions so we knew exactly where we were going and um, the commission had a booth and um, at the vendor section so we met up there a couple times. All of us scholarship, uh, excuse me, scholarship students met up there at the booth and were able to talk to other students who haven't been part of the scholarship but are interested in it. And um, throughout the whole conference, Catherine kept posting on the Facebook page, um, letting people know what was going on and um, we all kind of tried to chime in and tell people what we were experiencing. And uh, I like that Sheldon Cooper down there. That was kind of fun. <laughs> he um, was very popular at the conference, yes. <laughs> yeah, he was. Um, so it was kind of fun to walk around the vendor's booth, too, and, and see all the things that they had to offer and, and to, to meet lots of different people. Um, not only did I get to see some of the scholarship students that that I've already been acquainted with, like Monica. Um, we've kind of become a little bit closer now because of the scholarship and because of school, so it's nice to be able to talk to her and to a couple other students who are taking similar classes um, and uh, to get pointers on what classes to take and uh, what things they've done with their scholarships so that I can kind of get ideas and, and do things like that or, or come up with ideas on my own. and. Um, I actually roomed with Monica, so uh, I was with Monica and a couple people from my library that I work at, and and so we kind of went to a couple sessions together, and then other ones we went to different ones and talked about what we learned. So it's a good experience. That's a great summary. That was <laughs> it in a nutshell. Basically, <laughs> I think you touched on so many different aspects. One question I have for you is, how did you choose the sessions that you attended? 
Um, they, they, whoa, I can hear feedback. That was kind of weird. Um, they had a list of all the sessions that were going to happen on the website ahead of time. So I think it was even a month before the conference, um, they had everything listed out with descriptions and times and the rooms they were going to be in. And at first I kind of asked a couple of my coworkers at the library in York what they were planning on doing just to see um, their plans. But I chose a couple that were with them that I thought we could all go to to apply to our library. like. Um, like the signage one was kind of good for us. Um, but all in all, I just kind of chose ones that fit the public library aspect because there were lots of different sessions for different types of librarians. And, and I wanted to kind of focus more on the public library because that's where I'm at and um, that's where I want to continue being after I graduate too. So. Um, so yeah, I chose chose it based on that. So okay, so based on what what some of your interests are, your career interests, and then it also looks like in terms of <clears throat> you married you you were taking a a class at UNO, and so you followed one you went to one session that had something to do with WordPress and um, creating pages. Um, mm -hmm. One question that we do with our grant is what uh, especially with our scholarship students who are working in a library is to find out if you learned something, have you applied it at your library, and has it had an effect on any of your library users? So you talked a little bit here about working with com computer classes with seniors. Has I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but has there been a chance to implement that or even the Zoho chat, you know, have has, has any of that been, maybe, have you had a, a chance to put some of these things to use, and what have you heard back from the patrons? Well, I haven't exactly put them to use yet. Um, as I said, we're kind of in the process of renovating things, and both our website and our physical library. Um, and I have talked with the director about possibly doing classes for seniors. Um, so maybe that's something that we can do in the future, and I don't know. He's He's kind of the tech person of the library, so I don't know if, if that's something that he wanted to do and if I could help or maybe do it myself. Um, we haven't got there yet, but I did mention the Zoho chat to our assistant director, and she thought it was a good idea. So maybe when we, we get our new website up and running in the next couple months, that's something that we can add and um, we can all just kind of be a part of um, as we're sitting at the desk and doing other things that's we'd also be available on an online presence, which would be um, really cool. How about the, the problem patrons who have become patrons who need help? Based off of the change in your attitude, have you seen a change in your interaction with patrons who um, used to be called pa pa pro problem patrons but now are called pa patrons with help? <laughs> yes. Um, I, I really liked that session because of that statement exactly that they're not problem patrons but they're patrons that need help because it really changed my attitude about how I deal with people because sometimes it's very frustrating when someone wants something and they don't know how exactly to express their their needs so um, not only making sure that you understand what they're saying um, but just being I, I we like to call it killing them with kindness um, the kinder you are to them, um, maybe the more, the more they'll realize that, that, uh, that their frustration level goes down a little bit. And so, and the opposite is true. I mean, if, if you're more frustrated and show that frustration to them, then the situation's not going to be very good. So it's, it's been good to keep that mindset and to realize that they're there for help and they have questions and we're there to help them no matter whether they're angry at us or um, or we're their best friend. Either way, we're there to help and so um, we talked about phrases we can use like tell me more and let me see if I understand you correctly um, just to make sure that we're on the same page and um, we can help them the way they need to be helped. So. And even if you weren't able to help them get the answer that they were looking for, are they walking away a little, at least less frustrated and a little more satisfied? 
Yes, and they're they're coming into our library again, which is a good thing. <laughs> okay, so. that's a great indicator. Mm -hmm. That's a, I wasn't looking for the perfect answer from you, but that that's the kind of story that that we're that we're hoping to be able to um, show that what you're learning at conference you put to use, and that that there that the end user, which is your library user or patron, gets something out of that. So super, thank you, Libby. Does anyone have any questions for Libby at this time? You can go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface if you want to, or if you have your own microphone, just let me know there and I can unmute you and you can talk on the show just like we are. And if no questions for Libby at this time, she'll yep. be hanging around and so when we do some wrap up later on, um, she will be available for mm -hmm. questions. Yep. Whenever you think of anything, just type it in and we'll grab it. So thank you so much, Libby. And we're going to now speak with Monica Tidyman, who's going to introduce herself, talk about her uh, current position, her educational track. Um, and if, if she wants to talk about the stipend application process and the reimbursement, that's, that's fine. I think Libby did a really great job of um, providing a background story on that. But Monica, if you have something you'd like to add, that'd be great. Um, if you would like to talk about the sessions you attended and how you chose them, um, networking, and uh, any specific sessions that you would like to discuss, I will pull up your your um, additions to the forum here for you for you to reference. You have a couple of them here, so um, just let me know if I need to scroll down or anything. Hi, Monica. Hi. Um, my name is Monica Tidyman. I work at the Stromsburg Public Library here in Stromsburg, Nebraska. Uh, I was just hired October 1st officially to work there, so the conference was already kind of in the works and I already had it scheduled in things before I was actually working at a library. Um, what else? I graduated from CCC with my associates in 2011 and then went on to UNO, as was my plan from the beginning, um, to study library science. I'm looking at public library, you know, continuing on in that forum, that type of job. And I will hopefully, <laughs> everything's on track as I think it is, I will be graduating in December of this year with my Bachelor of General Studies. It will have a library concentration with a public administration minor and actually a religious studies minor. Um, so that is where I'm on track with my education. Um, this semester I am taking a fundraising for nonprofits class for, to fulfill my public administration minor. And then I am taking special libraries with Dr. Pasco, which is really fun. I'll be able to see a lot of different libraries here in the state. So um, as far as the scholarship goes, I actually just kind of stumbled on finding the scholarship. I liked, before I got my job, I was constantly checking the now hiring at your library for, with the Nebraska Library Commission page just to see what library jobs were available. I was also looking a lot at what education was required, you know, um, could I get a job with my associates? Was I going to need a bachelor's? That type of thing. It just, I checked the now hiring quite often just to kind of keep track of what the job market looked like. And it was while I was on that page that I saw the scholarships. And I think this was probably like the summertime, maybe before I started with um, UNO. And so I looked over the scholarship. I debated, do I need it? Do I not need to do this? Decided to go ahead and pursue it, you know, extra money when you're going to college will not hurt in any way, shape, or form. And um, so I did that and received the scholarship. It was, it's been a great help. It has uh, really made a difference in being able to continue my education at UNO. Um, the difference in prices, you know, between going to Central Community College and then transferring to a university, that's a huge price difference. So the scholarship really um, helped just take that financial burden off of going to college and being able to pursue my degree. Um, part of the stipend process with the scholarship that I did was I went ahead and received a laptop. Right away I applied for a stipend for a laptop. We have, um, our laptop is probably from 2007 that we have at home that was for use. 
I have three teenagers. We have already had to take our home computer in once to kind of get it repaired because of something someone downloaded, you know, or put on the computer. And that always made me nervous. With doing schoolwork, I wanted to be able to make sure that when I use the computer, it was working properly. You know, I've had problems with internet going down during a test and running to like a neighbor's house and trying to finish a test and things. So having a reliable computer was a big thing for me. And so being able to apply for the stipend and then receiving, um, you know, the okay to go ahead and get the laptop and be able to have that paid for by the library by the scholarship was wonderful. And so that's one thing I've taken advantage of. I have also um, used the membership stipend that is part of the scholarship. Um, I belong to the Nebraska Library Association, and then part of that is the scholarship also pays for some of the sections and the roundtables. Um, I didn't look this up because it gets kind of confusing, but to my remembrance, I am part of the Public Library and Trustees section, the New Member Roundtable, and the Young Adult Roundtable. And those were things I just picked because of my interests. I knew my interest was in public library. I love young adult lit. I love working with kind of that middle teen, older teen years. And so those were the reasonings behind picking those sections and roundtables. Um, looking towards the conference then, I picked this conference, you know, mainly because it was local. Um, like I said, I have three teenagers, I'm married, you know, there's a lot of things going on with work and things in my personal life that I needed kind of ease of access. Um, I've only flown once in my life, so I thought going anywhere too far would require more stress and more thought process than I wanted to deal with at this point. So having this conference available in Omaha was just handy. It was nice and easy. And I liked that it covered a broad range, you know, having the Mountain Plains sec or Association in there and having the school association in there just um, provided more sections and sessions and things to attend that were interesting. And so that was good, too. Yeah, Libby did a great job as far as how we applied, what we went through as far as getting to the conference. Um, like she said, we did room together. We split a room with four people. Um, so that you know made a difference on how much we were requesting as far as lodging. One thing I did learn um, once we got to the conference is that, especially if you're doing the lunches and the banquets, meals are not an issue. Um, the first morning, Libby and I ran out and got a quick you know coffee and breakfast type, you know easy, quick thing at just a local fast food. But what we learned was, you know, if you wait an hour, they're serving bagels, they're serving juice, they're serving coffee, they're serving things, you know, pretty constantly in that exhibitor's hall. And so, you know, meals aren't really an issue. There's a lot of those opportunities where you can eat just right there at the conference, especially if you participate in the lunches and banquets. And um, having the commission you know, with the scholarship, making those meals available to us, you know, that was great. I was very grateful for that. It um, cut down, I think, on a lot of running around you would have to do otherwise if you didn't do those lunches. So I recommend it. Um, it's very interesting, the things that were a part of the business meetings at the lunches that maybe I wouldn't have known about otherwise. Um, so I thought that was all interesting and very valuable as my experience as a student and being a part of a public library now. You know, do I want to continue membership in these sections, in these associations I'm in? Do I need to switch? You know, that type of thing was very enlightening. So um, looking at the sessions I went to, one thing was my librarian that I work for and I did sit down and go through the schedule ahead of time and looked at each session and said, you know, okay, I'll go to this one because this interests me, and then she would choose another one. Or sometimes we would both want to go to the same one and we're like, that's okay. You know, we don't have to go to different ones, even though we wanted to cover as much information as we could in, during the conference time. So we had kind of picked out sessions that we were going to do ahead of time. I picked out mine on what I felt like my weaknesses were and also what I had felt was already covered in previous classes that I had taken. 
um, looking through the sessions book again, you know, there's a web apps for library staff and patrons. Well, I had kind of went through the teaching and learning, I mean, I had went through the teaching and learning in a digital environment class and felt like we'd covered a lot of apps and things in that class, so I wasn't sure if I'd learn anything new. Um, customer service, we cover that pretty heavily in some of the first few classes that you take, like if you start at CCC, you know, we really go over customer service, leadership, those type of things. Um, emergencies in your library, I know we talked about emergency plans, things like that in one of my just recent classes. So some of the things I felt like I'd really covered well in my classes and that maybe I didn't need them now, but it's nice to know that those things are offered so that later when I feel like I need a refresher, I can get that. Um, even now, some of my classes that I took, you know, it was two years ago or more, you know, for cataloging or something like that. And now that I'm finally in a library and using that information, I kind of, I have to go back and I have to look at my notes and go back and look at those books. So we all need a refresher on things that maybe we don't use all the time. And so it's nice to know those will be available maybe at future conferences. Um, so I chose things that I felt were in the public library that interested me. Definitely books. I feel a weakness of mine right now is children's books. Um, I don't have little kids. I'm not using children's books, pictures books, those type of things. So I did attend um, the Dig Into Reading, where it talks about books that would be essential for um, the summer reading program. Because at this point, we're still not sure I, you know, how the summer reading program is going to go at our library this year. I may end up doing it. So I kind of wanted to know a little background into the summer reading program and of course Sally as always had some great suggestions mm -hmm. she had you know she kind of took us outside of the box as far as the summer reading program being dig into reading you know she would show how we could use gardening books she showed how we could use construction books um, for the older middle teens how we could use books that involved tunnels or books that involved um, just underground type activities and things like that so that you could stretch this dig into reading in a lot of ways. So I thought that was one good session. And then I also attended um, another one by Sally, which was the Best New Children's Books of 2012. And that was great just because I could write, you know, she hands out these handouts with the titles and you could just write all over them, you know, lesson for honesty. This was a book that had a lot of repetition. This was very cute. It had a lesson on sharing. Um, so that's something that I can then share with my um, director. And when we're looking at buying children's books and things, we just were going through some boxes of books, you know, and deciding what we wanted to buy. And there was a couple in there that I recognized from conference. And it's like, oh, yeah, we need to get this one. This one was really good. And so it just helps those decision processes, and it also familiarized me with what I need to be looking for in children's books, you know, what kind of things excite children and those items. So then the other one I went to that was mainly about books was the 2012 Notables book list um, that Pat Leach talks about. And I had heard Pat at our Tech Rodeo conference this summer and loved what she had to say about public speaking, knew she was a dynamic speaker, and so I really wanted to see what this notable books list was about also. And um, she reads these books, or tries to read as many of these books as she can, and then she kind of tells us why we need to read them, what we need to do about them, or what, you know. And so it was good to recognize some titles that we already had in our library, and I hadn't read them, but now I can speak intelligently with patrons about those titles. Um, one of the ones that is brought up over and over again, and I, my mind is blanking right now, the um, Laura Hill, Hillenbrand book, Unbroken. Mm -hmm. Many patrons bring that up. Um, it was brought up in my Sunday school class last week. Somebody was talking about the book. And so even though I haven't read the book, I feel like I can at least talk with them and have an idea of what that book is about and make recommendations off of what I learned from Pat to patrons as I learn their likes and things. Um, real quickly, the last two that I talked about in the forum 
and the two that were just amazing sessions to me was the seed library which I saw that you guys are going to do something about seed libraries in February, so I was very excited to see that. Um, I went to this session, and this is my funny story of conference, I went to this session thinking seed libraries were like a big city library who started new branches in other small towns. Wow. Or I went thinking that, um, you know, I just thought that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking of a big library starting small libraries in other areas, suburbs, whatever. And what it actually is, is it's really a library that you deal with seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I was just fascinated by this whole concept. And so it was just really interesting how they talked about how they started, the you know what they learned, what problems they had in beginning the seed library. Um, where they got the seeds to get started, you know, it's not, they were trying to focus on, you know, more organic and things. So it was just very interesting. And I did think, you know, some day down the road, this may work at like our library because we do have people in our town who are very interested in organic foods, very interested in growing their own foods. And then also at one point, we had some people who were trying to do heirloom gardening using the heirloom seeds which is a big focus of the seed library. And so, you know, I could see that working. Um, it's a lot of work, and we only have two librarians, so it might have to be a volunteer type thing at our library, but it's an interesting concept. And then the other one that I went to that I could see working with our library is the story walk that the Hastings Public Library does. Um, this was just, I could see it working in our town let me give a little background on a story walk because I had no idea what this was either. But basically you take a book and you take it apart, which Amy said made her feel like a horrible librarian to be cutting up these books. But um, you post them you know, on poster boards, on wood. There's a variety of things you have to look at where you post them. But you post them in page by page down a biking trail, around a lake, in a park, anything like that, where it involves family fitness along with literacy and reading. And I thought this was great for our town because we do have a hiking and biking trail that covers um, from one end of town to the other. Thanks for that picture, Catherine. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Facebook the other aspect with our town is that we have a really nice town square. We're you know, a small town, and we do a big Swedish festival every June. And one of the ways that Amy said you could start small with the Story Walk program is to just do it in your business windows. Then you're not worrying about the weather and those types of things that you are adding um, that come into play when you do the Story Walk. You can just put book pictures in the windows of your businesses around town. So I thought that would work great at Swedish Festival. We could do that, or we could even put them around our square and just do a shorter book that way. So. Yeah, and they've got great information, great pictures. They did on a massive scale. I mean, I think they did, like, what is that, six or seven parks all at once. And, I mean, when they did this, they went big. So <laughs> I would start much smaller. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the reporting process. You saw what I did on the forum. That's easy peasy, you know. Not a big deal to report on our sessions. Were you active on the, I created an event that um, for people to start to meet up in advance to figure out where they might, what they might attend. Here you are. Here I am. Yeah, Julia Cook was great. I found out we had some of her um, books, you know, in our library, so that was good. And yeah, see, I was like, look, a seed library is not an offshoot of the current library. <laughs> So, um, so this was a way for students, first of all, to RSVP just so they could start to see who else was going. And then I post some questions and polls saying, are you going to attend certain sessions? And so people could answer, and then that way they could see who else was going. But then somebody like Monica came in and posted live updates during the, the conference, which was great because then um, other people had a chance to comment on it. Yeah, this Kristen who commented, she's um, just a friend of mine from you know, childhood that lives in another area out west, and, you know, she's very interested in gardening and all that, and obviously has a great sense of humor, too, so. Yep. 
So let's see if there was anything else that you commented on. Let's see. I commented on some of your polls. You know, um, I did the business cards and so shared where I got my business cards from, where I ordered them. I think that was one of the first questions, wasn't it? Let's see. I think so. Right, that was a popular one because then everybody talked about where you could get business cards and how how you can get them pretty cheap or how you can make your own. And yours looked good. I got to see yours and I got to see Dana's. So, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So that was pretty neat. Um, so that was a chance for some interactivity prior to, during, and after the... Um, because Facebook's kind of funny that way. Um, they how how they allow for people to um, interact around the one topic and so e creating an event is actually one good way to do that yeah the other that we have had to do with a workaround since this is a page and not a group um, is the forum and so I'm just going to show that real quickly here I anybody can post the topic but typically it, it's I'm the one to post the topic um, and then um, I usually do the description here at the top. And as soon as it's created, it should show up in any of the, it should show up in the feed of anybody who likes our page. And then um, once they've participated, they follow the link, um, and then they can just create a new, they can create, I guess what it says is a comment or something. Let me see here at the end. And then other people can like each other's comments, and I think that, once you do that, um, if somebody likes your comment, I just wonder if you receive a um, a notification that somebody likes your comment. I'm not sure. Yeah, you do. Okay, that's great. So and then it also, sometimes people, I think sometimes will comment like below or in the forum or whatever, and it will notify you of that. And so you can kind of get some conversations going about a topic sometimes too. Right. Right. So this one was a two-pager actually. And if you don't see the, the two at the bottom, unfortunately, these last few people, they're not going to, some people may, may not have a chance to go in and take a peek at those. But so there they are. And so there's the forum. And then the event was pretty uh, popular, too, in terms of using Facebook. Um, let's see. So, Monica, you mentioned one. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to remember back. I didn't take a note. Um, did, did you take your laptop to conference then? No, I didn't. Well, and you know, it makes sense because a lot of the sessions you're sitting in rows, and so trying to type yeah. on your lap really isn't probably the easiest. The Wi-Fi there I thought was okay, or was it It was spotty? okay. It, it came and went. Um, it varied throughout the, the day, a few days of the conference. So. And so that can be a frustration. Um, also, whether or not you have free Wi-Fi in your own room, mm -hmm. that is something to consider when you're selecting it. Yes. When you're selecting a hotel, do they have free breakfast? <laughs> um, otherwise, you learn to eat in the exhibit hall. But um, do they have free breakfast? Do they have free Wi-Fi? Um, let me see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to consider when you're looking at a hotel. Um, in terms of travel, uh, just for anyone um, who's considering going to a conference, um, that this didn't apply to this one since it was in Omaha or La Vista. But in terms of looking at flights, kayak.com will compare um, all flights from almost all major um, uh, airlines except for one of them that doesn't cover is Southwest um, Airlines. So uh, for those individuals who are interested in attending um, attending um, Chicago's ALA conference coming up this summer, you want it because um, you can fly out of Omaha and Southwest. You'd have to go separately to the Southwest site to to find an estimate for how much the flight would cost for that. Um, I'm just trying to think if there, does anyone have any questions for Monica or Libby? Let's check the question bank. Yep, go ahead and type in your question or let me know that you want me to unmute you and you can ask that question that way. Nothing came in while Monica was talking. That's because she was so thorough. <laughs> Monica was so thorough and Libby was so thorough. Um, now, let's see. Um, Libby met Sherm, Andrew mm -hmm. Sherman. Monica, I'll put you on the hot, hot seat. Is there any presenter that you saw or anybody that you met that's a, that really you kind of felt a connection with, an immediate connection with? I was trying to think of, you know, anyone new that way. Um, and I, I couldn't, you know, Sally, you know, I'm familiar with her and things. 
probably the most, the one note I had made here that I didn't talk about was how many librarians I already know. I would, I'd kind of forgotten that until I got to conference and I kept seeing, you know, friends and people I'd met before and a part of that comes from the Tech Rodeo conference we did this summer and then, um, you know, my best friend from high school, her sister is a librarian um, out west, and she was there. There's, you know, three or four librarians here in town that work in other places, and I would see them. And um, so I have a really big network of librarians, and you kind of forget about that until you go to something like this where we're all gathered in one place and see that. So that was cool. Great. So re a chance to network, a chance for reunions, and perhaps if you meet a speaker that you're impressed with, you might be able to follow up. So, ex for example, if you are going to be the um, summer reading program coordinator, you, you will be in touch again with Sally, and so you kind of have a, a rapport with her already, even if she was the speaker and you were in the audience. Right, right, because you, you already feel like you know them a little better that way. Right, excellent. Excellent. And is there anything, again, I'll put you on the hot seat, anything that you took back to work that you were able to use maybe immediately where you noticed a difference in customer service or even talking with patrons about the possibility of something? Is there anything that comes to mind? Probably the biggest thing is the book knowledge. You know, it, as much as we'd like to, we will never be able to read all the books that are in our library, <laughs> even though I like to try as hard as I can. Um, so hearing other people talk about the books they've read or books they've, you know, looked through and being able to make those recommendations and having a little more knowledge about the books, then I can share those recommendations with the patrons. And I have, you know, I've recommended children's books. I've recommended adult books. Um, we have the, the Golden Sower Award winner, The Compound. Um, and the author, you know, was at their conference and I listened to her speak and that just makes it a little more personal to you. So just being able to focus on the patrons who come in. We have a large base who primarily, you know, they're coming in to get books to read for entertainment. They're regular people who come in and want books and that's our focus in a lot of ways is the books in the library. So having more knowledge without having to try to read them all was helpful. Super, super, great. Well, I think that brings us full circle here. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have yes. some conferences that are upcoming. Let me see if I I'll have. I'll go ahead and mute Monica. OK, sure. Thanks, Monica. We're going to put you on mute now. No new questions came in, so. OK, um, let me see if I can find upcoming Ollie G. Where was I? Conferences that are coming up that students might be able to apply. Um, again, midwinter is coming right up, so that's been, we have one student going to midwinter. Um, South by Southwest um, is down in Austin, Texas. The Library Technology Conference is, it's great. It's close by. It's uh, yeah. just a little bit of a drive, and it's a, it's, starting to really gather some some moss. It's really, mm -hmm. no, no, it's a rolling ball, so no, it's not gathering moss. It's really starting to gather some momentum, is what I'm trying to say. Um, for being a regional conference, it's starting to become, uh, have some national, some national um, coverage, I think. Mm -hmm. Computers and Libraries um, is in Washington, D.C. in April. Um, and then the Association of College and Research Libraries. So uh, maybe we have students who are not working in a college or research library, um, but that's their focus in their master's program or they're in their undergraduate and they're considering going on for their master's and what they really want to focus on is college and research libraries. So that would be an option for them um, to go and just really just jump in with both feet and get immersed and find out if that's really what they're interested in. The Special Libraries Association, I hear a student who, again, I think it was Monica saying that she's taking the Special Libraries class this mm -hmm. um, semester, and so um, visiting all different kinds of libraries that aren't public libraries um, this, this semester, that would be something, if someone is interested, that's in San Diego. 
um, the International Society for Technology and Education. And even if you're not a school librarian, going to be a school librarian, um, there's still probably, you could go to the website and see if there's quite a bit that would be of interest to you because I bet it, a lot of it's going to be technology focused. Uh, once again, ALA will be in Chicago at the end of June into early July. Mountain Plains Library Association is in our backyard again. They'll be up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And then one right here in our state is the Association for Rural and Small Libraries right here in Omaha. So um, hopefully, like Monica, who mentioned um, probably not being able to travel too far from home um, because of other obligations, um, this is it's still considered a regional conference, and so it is eligible mm -hmm. for stipend. Now we're looking at um, LITA, which is Library and Information Technology Association in November. And the American Association for School Libraries is out in Connecticut, and that will also be in November. So that kind of takes care of some of the up upcoming conferences. And the last time we did this, someone submitted to me one saying, oh, that's not on the list. And I believe it was the one that's up in St. Paul. I think that Krista caught that last time we did this, um, that, um, that that one hadn't been mm -hmm. listed yet. So we missed it last year, but we were, we're mm -hmm. plugging it this year. And I suppose if there's other ones that you know about, let Catherine know and she can see if we can if they should be on the list. Absolutely. Or something we're Absolutely. Not aware of. If there's one that I haven't that's library related, mm -hmm. um, but if it's about technology and innovation or if it's talking about um, education um, for educators, but that school librarians could get so much out of it. So for example, the South by Southwest EDU is the one that we're really plugging um, mm -hmm. with that one more so than the South by Southwest one. Um, that one is a uh, a really good one that's high energy definitely one uh, you have to take some Red Bull I think with you or five-hour energy with you to keep up with them it sounds like it's it's a jam-packed um, great conference with a lot of very passionate people yes. <laughs> so um, for me and for um, on behalf of Monica and Libby I want to thank you so much for attending today's Encompass Live to learn about this uh, amazing opportunity that our scholarship students have to attend conferences and thank you so much to Libby and to Monica for sharing your conference attendance experience and I think that um, they are very representative of a lot of the students who have attended our conferences so thank you so much ladies and I'll yeah. turn this back over to Krista sure great so thank you Catherine and Libby and Monica thanks for being on the show um, we have a thanks from the audience. Laura has from Santa and says, thank you, awesome. <laughs> thank you so much, Laura. Um, this is great to hear about the opportunities that you can have as a student to um, be able to attend these things that you possibly maybe think about and say, nope, can't do that. How can I ever possibly do that? Well, you can. <laughs> you know, take a look at what we were offering here. Um, so that will wrap it up for today. Um, yeah, you have your upcoming. Yeah, I didn't know if you Just type in Encompass Live there, and it'll bring it up for me. There we go. So just so you know, if you type in Encompass Live into Google, we're the first result. <laughs> so that's all right. That's cool. Um, so that wraps it up for today. Um, but I hope you join us next week when our topic is um, Any Works, which is the website for the Nebraska Department of Labor. And um, staff from there, Buffy Cranford, will be here with us showing us how to use the website for doing job searching and submitting for um, unemployment insurance. So if you do have people coming into your library asking about this, this is something that has to be done online now. Um, we'll have a full-on training session about that next week for you with handouts and everything that you can use um, in your library to um, help these people that might be coming in for that. Um, so that will be our show for next week. And um, we are also on Facebook. Encompass Live has a page on Facebook as well. So if you are um, a big Facebook user, go ahead and like us on Encompass Live on, on Facebook, and you will get notifications of what um, upcoming episodes there are, uh, when recordings are ready and available for you to watch. Um, I do reminders the day of that you can jump in right on the fly for any sessions. If you have not registered ahead of time for Encompass Lives, that's fine. You can just pop in um, the day of, not a problem there. Um, our show is open and free for anyone who wants to to watch and attend, so we'll share with anyone who might think has an interest in any of our topics, and they can um, come and watch the show. And I do want to plug the Nebraska Librarians Learning Together page. Mm -hmm. If you can go back, there it is. Oh, yeah. we, we give Encompass props, and they give us props, and um, so it's the, the URL, is the extension after Facebook is just Nebraska Librarians. Mm -hmm. We are 269 librarians strong, librarian so and fun. student strong. And um, we'd love to have, if, if you haven't joined us yet, 
uh, I, I, I try to post um, links of interest to students, to librarians, um, hot topics, hot issues. Um, and so it's a, it's, a, it's a fun page, and it's really gaining some, some camaraderie. Very active, yes. It is very mm -hmm. active. So we'd love to have you um, on board. And I think that comes from you, Catherine, doing a lot of uh, encouraging of discussion on there and posting things. And yep, people I try just to jump in and it, right, it builds. I, <laughs> I try to post questions that might start a conversation. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for attending. And that will wrap it up for today. And wrap it up for today. And so we hope we'll see you next time and on future episodes. Thanks. Bye-bye.